Hello all, welcome to the next talk uh, with Limpe Fuchs. Um, Limpe Fuchs is going to perform, perform tonight, uh, tonight, well, at 5 p.m. at Klariski Church. Um, and we invited her uh, to give us presentation or interview about her artistic practice and any other topic uh, Limpe would like to talk about. Um, Limpe, Limpe is a musician, listener, expert at tuning stones, and much more. Uh, I let Limpe introduce herself. As uh, some of you might not uh, see Limpe perform, I'll play a short video. But I would just like to say I've seen Limpe multiple times, solo and both uh, in a duo with Mark Fell. And it's quite imposant. It, Yes, I, I've been there. So uh, Limpe builds her own instruments that are take space, resonate uh, with the with the with the buildings where they are when she's playing them. So I'll play a short video from Sonic Protest Festival uh, in Paris, uh, and then I'll invite Limpe to the stage to talk about her practice. <laughs> Limpe Fuchs to the stage, please. Uh, this was not very specific for my <laughs> performance because it was such a loud audience and I uh, decided to, to start with a synthesizer, but I don't have it now with because in the church there will be a good acoustic and people very silent, and I think I can work also with silence. Because once uh, I was told, said, the most impressive is when I do nothing. <laughs> <laughs> but before I wanted to tell you, said, I started my career with protesting. Protesting against also the historic past of the National Socialism. I am the first German generation without war and I hope to be this generation or to to remain it. Because after two years of COVID, we had such a low culture, especially the underground culture, because I, I, I think also there are 
now, after 30 years, the issues from my first protesting music, I still think that my thoughts and my lifestyle are still not the mainstream because I yeah I have to have this hat because this engagement in nature and in acoustic music I think it's very important also when now the electronic music is so in the focus. And uh, I'm very sad that the German government now has to produce for this strange war to to spend so much money for the opposite of culture and music because yeah in germany we are still on the safe side and but it's it's not the thinking of the normal people. I think we, we are the normal ones, and I have three children. I don't want to have them, the planet, going worse. There are many other interesting subjects to follow than to produce weapons. Can I, so you mentioned you lived your life without war, but it was still uh, through a lot of turmoil, through a lot of uh, yeah. 60s, revolutions, it's culture increasing. wars. It's yeah. And, but I would like to ask like. But now, now I am 81 years old, and I don't want to go further on protesting. Protesting have to be of the young ones. They have to do. And uh, the only thing I know said to 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 drive so much cars is the uh, this evolution of the mobility, they can say that it's our historic fault to, but we can go back because 100 years before the water was good and the sun was good and now especially in the in the region where I live in southern Bavaria we don't have good water I have to have it from a special fountain and in the, in the cities, they use, in Munich perhaps, they use the water from for 4,000 years from the deep ground. Um, I would address this, like even 100 years ago, there was lead in the pipes, but uh, I would like to return to your music. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah. we can also... Yeah, you started with like the protesting and I, I would like to maybe go into it like what kind of social or political role uh, does your music have or if it has any? Like, is there any 
political, social elements that you, when you are performing or the music you are making, mm -hmm. that you perceive? Yeah, my uh, table direction was to, because in Munich you didn't know drums. I think it was, I was already 15 years old. I, I went with a friend to a jazz club and, and listened and for the first time to a drum set. <laughs> and so this piano work was going on and the singing was going on. But you were 15, but you already had some music training. What? You already played some music instruments at the age? Yes, yes. and uh, but the, also the listening to the nature was for me always important. And so I grew up with the noises that were different and also the classical instruments and then also yeah because I know when I heard the first drum I was seven years old and we had a fire alarm I thought and all the classes had to go to the court and then from very far away I heard bum 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 and there were coming a group of Scheffler. They, they had, they performed a dance and said, this drum was really the first I had heard. <laughs> um, you are a uh, studied musician. You studied music for a long time, but then you started improvising and maybe abandoning the tradition, traditional structures of music. Did you go through processes of unlearning music or did you build on top of the education? Yeah, I, from the classic side, Schoenberg was the most important composer that the Every tone in also in the normal scale is has the same value, not like uh, one four five one four five in the folk classic, but uh, and this is like a liberation. Could you explain what how is it a liberation for you? Yeah, because every tone you use, you can sh choose your own combination and you are not uh, like the Bach, uh, Johann Sebastian Bach, he, he really went to the border of composition in, this, in his time. When you see the the Fugen, he, he, and also his, his thinking was when he would have lived here, <coughs> he would have agreed to Schoenberg, said all the music can be in a context you compose. And is this uh, admiration yeah. of Schoenberg still Music present in, in your... Music in a very high range to every noise, like you see here with the sheets of metal. For me, it's also important to have, to have open ears. The only thing is that now, at yesterday night, the... You have the electricity you can turn as far as you like, but the ears are more sensible, I think. <laughs> so when he walked, walked, 
what, when somebody goes here or anything. Yeah, so listening I had, to I, the noise. I, I think. had a question about this. What's your, uh, what's your approach or feeling about amplification? Uh, you mentioned in this video it's not representative because you were in loud crowd and you wanted to I kind of match the loudness. Said the acoustic sector will not only be alive in the classical, and uh, yeah, the small noises. I like the small noises. I can't <laughs> say more than, and especially the increasing when you don't start a, a, on a low level, you can't increase. And and says start from high level and until then, I always wondered when rock. Uh, groups were on stage and the electricity fell out, all stopped because the drama could have gone on, could have gone go on. <laughs> mm. I would like to speak about improvisation uh, in your practice. You said that you defined improvisation as doing the right sound at the right moment. But you have been improvising for many moments, <laughs> many years, uh, building a de deep understanding of the instruments, their sounds, yeah. their timber. So, I, so do you I manage to still surprise yourself in improvisation, or is it yeah, improvisation? You can start at every moment to improvise, but it's necessary to have also to study your skills, yes. And uh, not because Mark Fell told me he never learned an instrument, he started with a synthesizer. <laughs> That's also possible. But yeah, there are many possibilities. <laughs> The main thing is that I would like to that anybody would try to do something by himself. It's such a difference to choose music from pads from YouTube and things. Is it also when you perform, you perform with Mark Fell, uh, do you prefer to be on your own or to work with other people? Yeah. Yeah, because I have these special instruments now, but just now I have my workshop to build five pendulum string instruments for uh, institution in Belgium, in Genk, where there are yeah, people not good in brain and uh, handicapped and because this is the most simple instrument you can play. It's the resonating drum and a weight of bronze. And when you beat it, it has very special sound and you can pluck the string. It, but I realized in workshops that mostly women sometimes do too much. I think um, um, the masculine uh, are more involved in thinking of 
even now, in thinking of technical skills. And uh, uh, a woman has more emotion. And so this is a difference because sometimes I, yeah, in Brussels, I had a workshop. The first was eight men and two women. The second were eight women and two men was totally different. But you yourself spent some time, or maybe a lot of time, on technical skill. When, when you, let's say, started playing violin, or even with your instrument, do you spend time practicing? Um, practicing playing or learning the instruments you built? What? What's the question? Uh, you built instruments. If you was an it was a question. How much do some people can improvise uh, on percussive instruments because you have the technique playing on percussive instruments, but your instruments are specific. Do you spend a lot yeah, of time? Yeah, it's also with the drums. No, if you if you don't overdo your technical state, you can beat on the drum, bam. Bam, bam. It's is, it's the same as if you do too much and it's uh, uh, confusion. Mm. The, I always say when you can do nothing wrong when you do as your body can do it. It because it's it's really not necessary. To, to to have many skills. Yeah, it's yeah, it's used to to go to a concert and see a skilled person. <laughs> but it's it could be different. Yeah, and you built your skill, right, on your during your performances. And main principles of your work are yeah, sound. I put off this head because it's too hot. This is also only for my feeling to have good nature and to to look to the climate and to have this thinking not to use too much because the earth, the globe, I was once in, in invited to Cairo and ran eight hours through the desert and I realized that only my body has to be watered and from the sun. The globe is not interested in human beings. Yep, it uh, lives on its own. <laughs> um, Only we want to survive. <laughs> um, some of the main principles of your work are around sound, but also about movement, how you move uh, in, in making music, but also how you perform. Um, and my question is, what is the relationship for you be between making music and movement or performance? Or maybe even if there is oh. any edge border between, wh where does music concert changes into performance? Yeah, I have these two uh, skills from, yeah, from in the 60s, I, I started to do, rhythmic and to to walk rhythmic and to to do with the, the tools they have like with balls and with strings and and also the the thinking of where are I where am I Am I in the middle or on the right? Is behind me somebody? 
And when I do workshops, I like to do first of before they go to the instruments. When we have a big room as here, and also in Oslo, I had a very nice performance stage, and the eight students, they had just to, to walk around and always to fill the whole room. Also to go left or to go uh, backward, forward, and to, to listen or also to listen to the steps and to find a, a rhythm, all work going then also very fast and also filling the room. These, yeah, because this a musician said in the classic, he goes to the stage, he makes a bow, he makes his instruments, he makes a bow, he goes off. This is, yeah, I, I realized, uh, this, I had, I listened to a concert of Cecil Taylor once, mm -hmm. and it was totally black, the, the stage, and he crouched around. <laughs> you just heard that he was on the ground, and after, only after a while he climbed to the chair and started to. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, and I made a lot, I think uh, the culture of music financed about eight theater plays for me. And in this time, I really worked hard. One year for every theater, or for the light, for the stage, with the ensemble. And this is also a very good uh, experience. You have mentioned a couple of elements of improvisation, like filling the room, uh, listening. Um, you taught, you have been teaching improvisation, and I know it might be a hard question, but if you could give like a quick lesson of improvisation, what is the key um, teaching uh, you are giving to your students, or even what you learn from them in the process, like uh, about how what can you teach about improvisation? Or what's the key message you are giving your students about how to improvise? Yeah, you have to ask the students okay. <laughs> because I, uh, the only thing in Oslo was normally when I do uh, improvisation, perhaps two hours a break, then more two hours, I just look that everybody can get in the work and have fun. But when you have to have a performance in the end with this group, you have to work different because especially in, in Oslo, I never was in Norway before. I had in this festival the last day for my performance and also the student group has to had to perform. And so I always had to think, what do they do in this half hour? It's, uh, it's uh, different, but I, I managed because we had several days and uh, Yeah, should 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 I talk about this? <laughs> no. No, I think it's good to give just a top top overview. Because it, it was totally different to what I learned from the other tutors. Because one was a flute player, and they had to sing ha 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 
ha ha ha ha ha ha ha ha ha ha ha ha ha ha ha ha ha ha ha ha ha ha ha ha ha ha ha ha ha ha ha ha ha ha ha ha ha ha ha ha ha ha ha ha ha ha ha ha ha ha ha ha ha ha ha ha ha ha ha ha ha ha ha ha ha ha ha ha ha ha ha ha ha ha ha ha ha ha ha ha ha ha ha ha ha another experience and so I, I thought of when they are going around they call somebody so it's an other emotion if if you listen to your voice if it's right or if it's nice the most singers they have to have or can I reach this tone or this tone or this tone and uh, to, to ask, wah, woo, is different, and also to, to sing for a beloved person. And it's different to shout to somebody. And it was really strange how they shouted to each other. <laughs> and we had also this circling, and I realized I, I don't know if you know the bees, when they have a new queen, they go to and make a swarm. I said, you are a bee swarm, and you, you hum mm -hmm, when you go around. And we, you go out, and we thought of animal voices. And even they crouched, and they woof, 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 or meow. Oh, and went be 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 like a bird, and so we had in the performance we had the beehive, the going out, doing with the voice the the birds the three times, and then go to the instruments. Thank you. Uh, listening to you make those voices and sounds, I wonder why do we? Yeah, why is my speech? Like speech, why don't we use more sounds in regular communication? We, well, we do, but um, I would like to open the uh, audience for any question, if there is any question. In that case, I would just like to ask like last question about your performance uh, this afternoon. Is there anything you would like to say about the performance, or it can stay all surprise? But they are not, they are, yeah, after the performance, I, I am the last one, I think. Yes, in the church. It, it, it's quite normal that people want to, to, to try, and yes. I assist, yes. That's beautiful. So anybody, and maybe even in the, like in the venue, will probably uh, offer interest. this to the people to explore the instruments Good. and... Ask any follow-up questions because it makes more sense to ask yeah, the questions after. I I I know what can be wrong, what can be too much, yeah. and I I I just take off what you have the wrong thing and give you the better. <laughs> I, I hope we have the church <laughs> booked for long, so we'll stay for, there for hours after the performance for a secret workshop. <laughs> okay. Um, is there anything else you would like to say on, on your so own? So I have <laughs> noticed something, but I think I already did what I have. Yeah, possibility of. Yeah, also the main thing is that I really want to have also in the avant-garde, so to say, not to lose all the acoustic possibilities. Also not to only be on the laptop side, but to have also uh, perhaps to go down and up, to go down and up, perhaps, to have this, the power in a, in 
said, your, your ears can follow your power. <laughs> thank you very much. Um, thank you all for joining us. Enjoy the little sounds. <laughs>